I really like old things, and I have some favorite projects here tonight and the stories that go along with them. This is one of my first serious projects. This table came to me through a picker who basically couldn't sell it to anyone. It had four rotted legs, missing stretchers, no top, and it was an exercise in uh, using my lathe and doing careful measurements. When I was completed, uh, I painted red on the new wood to match the old red, and this is in my house right now as a uh, computer work table. This is sort of an interesting item. It's a Purda screen that my customer got in Afghanistan. And when you walk past the screen when it's in the window, the pattern changes. He wanted to be able to spin it in his house for visitors. On the upper left, you see a 1690 tavern table from New England. My client wanted it to look like it did when it was new. Uh, no top, no drawer, and pieces of wood hacked onto the legs. There you can see what it looked like uh, right before it got painted. While I had such a nice piece <clears throat> in my house, I made one for myself. It's the red one. I put an oval top on it, did a little bit of distressing. Here's a piece of furniture is referred to as a high chest of drawers. It had sat in water too long. No feet, no cornice. It only had the top three drawers and the bottom drawer. So it was an exercise in cutting dovetail drawers. Here's a 18th century chest of drawers. Once again, missing the feet, missing the molding. And as I found out after I started working on it, the drawer fronts had been hacked with plywood. So I had to replace the drawer fronts. Now, yes, the finished product does look like a new piece of furniture. But hopefully, at my estate sale, it will begin to look like an antique. This next piece, uh, my customer found it under a porch down in Baltimore and apparently had some sentimental value to her. And uh, despite like only half being there, she wanted it brought back to its former glory. All kinds of wood had to be replaced. Doors were missing on the bottom. Uh, there was enough clues there for me to know what I, sh what I have to do. Um, the, the upper door, the door I've never done before, I had to do some poking around at the York County History Center, where luckily I'm employed, and I found a door to show me how the old guys did it, and then it was painted in to come close to what was there. So now I'm switch gears, I'm into old radios. One of my first purchases was from eBay and the seller was packaging challenged. He had shipped it in a shoe box with like newspaper around it and that's how I got it, 60 some pieces. I got my money back, but I just couldn't throw it away. And since all the pieces are actually there, all I have to really do is put them back to where they were. And next couple weekends, that's what I did. When it was done, of course, it was loaded with little cracks from all the pieces. So I went with this paint job. Now, paint jobs like this in the radio collecting community, uh, they take a dim view on changing the originality. But in this case, uh, they cut me some slack. Here's a piece of furniture from bygone years. This is a chair side radio. 
It too sat in water and had all kinds of replacements. This would be next to a stuffed chair in the living room and the man of the house would reach over and tune his station. Here's one super Art Deco radio from New Zealand. And it was a radio I thought I'd never come across, so I made my first attempt at making a radio from scratch. Had to get some special plywood. It was a nightmare of angles and precision, and you can see the finished product there. I put it in the History Center's fundraising auction, and the proud new owner of the radio is me. I, I, bought, I bought it back. Here's my oldest radio, and it's also the only radio made in York at the Manley Manufacturing Company. And despite being 1925, uh, it took the least effort to get it working. I, I paired it up with this speaker, it's referred to as the Dancing Ladies. And the first time sound came through it, I'm quite certain it was the first time they were dancing to Whole Lot of Love by Led Zeppelin. <laughs> And here's a relic that's already been <coughs> rescued. Some frugal Dutchman hammered a 1922 license plate over the end of this shovel so he didn't have to buy a new one. It could be in that book, You Know You're From York.